I joined. And so let's just jump right into it. So um, to give you a quick outline of my presentation, I'll go over our background info, um, do a quick pro. Did you lose connection, Tina? The sidewalk and the curb, um, which is uh, found in a lot of Long Beach neighborhoods. So the Long Beach Water Department provides free native California native plants, mulch, and pavers to residents wishing to replace the turf grass oops, in their parkways. Um, and our pilot period started in February of 2020 and lasted until December 2021. And now in 2022, it's in, uh, we're establishing it as an official program offered by our department. So a huge thank you to everyone at CMPS who worked with us to develop this program. Hey, hey Tina, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, for some reason, you cut out for a bit and your uh, screen share stopped. Oh, okay. Let's try that again. <laughs> it's not a Zoom meeting without some technical difficulties, huh? <laughs> sure. We're seeing okay. your screen, but there's still the um, some message all done. Okay. So now is it in presenting mode? Not yet. Do you want me to share your presentation, Tina? Oh, uh, oh wait, let's see. How about now? <laughs> yeah, it's go. sharing now. Okay, perfect. Sorry, folks. All right. Um, so why parkways? We chose to focus specifically on parkways um, because they are typically difficult to irrigate efficiently. Because they are narrow yet long strips of land, we commonly see like overspray onto the sidewalk or curb and runoff is also common. But when we replace the grass with native plants, however, watering needs are greatly reduced. And secondly, parkways tend to be easier to manage. Since we are dealing with a smaller landscape, it requires less work to convert and maintain than transforming an entire yard. And in fact, many program participants have told me that they chose to go with the parkway program first as sort of a stepping stone before they jump into our larger Want to Garden program, which is our flagship and traditional turf re rebate program for our front yards and backyards. And that brings me to my next slide about our program benefits. So um, traditional turf replacement rebates can inhibit participation because uh, participants need to buy all the materials first and take on a large expense before they receive reimbursement. However, with the Parkway program, since we provide all the materials for free, there are no upfront costs with the exception of the turf removal itself, and that cost can vary depending on the method that participants choose. So if they do it themselves, it can be free or they can hire a landscaper to help them out. And next, the Parkway program makes replacing turf easier and more streamlined because we offer five pre-designed plant palettes to choose from. So participants don't need to stress over doing research on what plants to choose or meeting strict design requirements. And the picture on the right is a Snapchat, a snapshot from our program guidebook. And in the guidebook, we have a design template for each of the plant palettes we offer so that you can see where you want to place the plants. And so you can see um, how much space they take up when they reach full maturity. And this template shows a four by 10 foot long park Way, but we will multiply the amount of materials based on the size of the actual parkway. So for example, if it's 20 feet long, then they would get twice the amount of plants as well as the appropriate amount of mulch and stones to fill the entire parkway. And the mulch and stones are delivered directly to the parkway too, which makes it a lot more convenient for the customer. 
And finally, the parkway program promotes native plants. I'm sure you're all very familiar with with the benefits of native plants. They support the local ecosystem and attract pollinators and they're lower maintenance than turf grass and they're adapted to our weather conditions. So makes them a lot more sustainable in the long run. And our parkway projects showcase the aesthetics of California natives, which just proves that our natural California landscape can be beautiful and thrive without using a lot of water. And so what do these aesthetic parkways look like? I'll show you our five plant palettes that we offer. And uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to Anne-Marie Benz from CMPS who came up with the punny names for our plant palettes. So CMPS helped us select these plants and created the designs um, that would thrive specifically for our Long Beach climate. And first up, we have Sage of Contentment, which has the California sagebrush, ashy leaf buckwheat, and the seaside daisy. And number two, we have Back to the Fuchsia with California fuchsia, pigeon point coyote bush, and sea cliff buckwheat. Third, we have Day After Tomb Yarrow with common yarrow, Idaho fescue, and island snapdragon. Fourth is the leading sedge with sand dune sedge, red buckwheat, common rush, point sal sage, and blue eyed grass. And last but not least, number five is simply iris cystival. And this plant in particular uh, features plants that do well in more shady areas. So it's good for parkways that have existing trees that catch shade in the parkway. And it has Yankee Point, Carmel, Ceanothus, Island Alum Root, and Douglas Iris. So now going into our program partners, of course, as I mentioned before, CNPS helped us design all the plant palettes and also created our program guidebook on our website. And we mailed those out to all our program participants. And we also have um, tutorial videos on planting and laying out the materials and just um, pre preparing the parkway site. And that's also uh, on our YouTube channel and on our website. And we also co-hosted three virtual workshops with us. So um, this is just a screenshot of our third virtual workshop that Chris uh, thankfully presented with us for, so thank you. And then we work with two local nurseries um, to provide all our plants, Garibaldo's Nursery and Ricardo's Nursery. And then Site One Landscape Supply delivers the bulk mulch and flagstone pavers directly to the parkways. Uh, here's an outline of the program process. So first the customer applies on our website, lbwater.org slash parkway. Then um, we conduct a pre-inspection of the parkway, which just consists of measuring the length and width and verifying that there is existing turf grass. And then when we approve the application, we mail them our guidebook. And then third, the customer uh, removes their turf and sends us photos for verification. Once we receive those photos, we order the plants at the nursery and schedule the delivery for the mulch and pavers. Then the customer uh, installs all the materials and lets us know when we're done so that we can go back and take some beautiful after photos. And then we just keep in contact with the participants and take up progress photos, make sure everything's going okay. For example, if some plants didn't establish well, we'll help troubleshoot and offer replacement plants if necessary. So here is our results so far. We've completed 102 parkways, which makes up just over 40,000 square feet of turf grass. And I also did some basic calculations on water usage, comparing um, the uses of grass and native plants and estimated that we'll be saving almost 1 million gallons of water annually um, from the projects that we've completed so far. And on the left is just a map of all our projects located throughout Long Beach. Of course, no project is without some bumps in the road. And during our pilot period, we did learn a few things to help us improve our program. So one of the challenges we faced was some plants were struggling to establish after planting. And this was partly because um, some participants were very new to caring for native plants, which is very different from taking care of grass. And another reason is that we did give out some plants during the summer um, in the first year, 
but we learned that that wasn't really the best idea since the plants didn't do as well in the hot weather. So in the second year, we still um, accepted applications over the summer, but just paused on plant distributions until the weather cooled down again in the fall. And as a solution to just the maintenance uh, aspect, we are working on creating a more detailed guide, which outlines um, the watering requirements and like pruning and thinning recommendations, and just what to expect each season after planting for each of our plant designs. Oh, another challenge was the fluctuating plant availability throughout the year. So, um, some participants needed to wait or select substitutes. For example, we had trouble um, sourcing some of our buckwheats, but um, we just worked with the nurseries and just chose what was available at that time. And as a solution to this, we're also thinking of maybe updating our palettes to provide more options to choose from and have plants that are more consistently available and also just gathering the plant orders ahead of time to give the nurseries more time to prepare um, because our nurseries do a combination of propagating their own plants and um, sourcing from wholesalers there is a bit of some uh, balancing to do. But despite these small challenges, our pilot period was extremely successful, which is why we're able to continue the Parkway program this year. And um, next, I just have this uh, before photo of one of our projects. So just some green turf grass. And then this is what it looks like right after the installation. So all of the plants do come in one gallon sized pot. So it might look a bit sparse um, in the beginning, but they do fill out. And after a year, this is what that same parkway looks like. And this is plan four. And um, here's some more photos. Um, we do allow the participants to sort of customize their own parkway. So as you can see on the left, this person added some more rocks and some other plants. And on the right, um, we have another plan for, but they also added some agave in the middle. And um, this is a special project that we did, which is the Bixby Knolls National Park. It's not a real national park, but it's this um, corner lot on the corner of Long Beach Boulevard and Roosevelt Road. And the Bixby Knolls Improvement Association reached out to us and uh, we were able to give them all the mulch and provide a lot of plants for this project. They did um, choose some of their own plants to include as well. As you can see, there's some larger shrubs in the back. Um, and here's some other photos. They added a lot of great decor. So um, if you're in Long Beach, I highly recommend you check out this Parkway project. It's so beautiful. And um, that concludes my presentation. So um, my contact info is at the bottom. We have our website, lbwater.org slash parkway. And my email is waterconservation at lbwater.org. Do we have any questions? Carol, you're with us now. Okay. Hi, uh, I live in Long Beach and I installed a native garden in my front yard, um, uh, I think in 2013. But I, I don't know if you have any control over this. There seems to be a disconnect between departments in Long Beach. Um, we lost a big tree. The whole block lost a lot of trees because of redoing the roads and when i talked to the department that handles tree removal the head of it told me i asked for a native tree suggestion and he told me chinese elm needless to say we didn't and then on top of that when i talked to the men that came to take down the siberian elm that had died uh, they said, well, that's a crazy tree because we don't even have the staff Those should be pruned twice a year and we're on a five year cycle. Uh, we talked, we had curbs redone. We tried to get curb cuts done while they were doing curbs on the block and the 
you know, couldn't get any department to talk about it. So I, I'm so excited to have a crazy, wonderful native garden, but I just wish there was a little more coordination across, across the board because there's just so much, so much wonderful stuff that can be done. Your program is fantastic. And I'm gonna tell neighbors about this, you can be sure, because it's a great way to start. Thank you for that. I'm sorry you had that experience with our tree department. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't work too closely with them, but I can definitely uh, see what we can do and try to promote more communication within our two departments since they are closely related and we do want to promote more native trees in Long Beach. Thank you. So I had a question. Um, so a hundred parkways is amazing. That's an amazing amount. So con congratulations on, on achieving that. That's just so many. Uh, I was wondering if there's a goal for how many more or do you, do you know how many more people are signed up? Um, for the next round? Yeah, so um, initially our goal for the pilot was 100 and gladly we reached that goal. And in our first year, we did a lot of promotion um, via email and on our social media to get our applicants in. And during the second year, we actually didn't have to do any promotion at all. All our applicants came in through word of mouth mostly. And um, also since we were kind of reaching the end of our budget for the pilot, I had to just make sure that we weren't over accepting people. But now we do have some people on the wait list and I'm hoping to just convert at least a hundred more again this year since we reached a hundred within the period of two years. So just sort of like doubling our outreach um, now that we have the capability to do so, I think that's our goal. Awesome. And and following up on that, I, I know you used to do the the garden tours. Maybe when after um, or when that resumes, would are you gonna include the parkways in, in some of that touring action? Oh, that is a great idea. Yeah, we had to halt our lawn to garden tours, but definitely uh, we hope to start that again soon once the COVID thing dies down. And yeah, including parkways in that tour would be a great idea. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Tina. I'm curious, this is Julie Coffey. I'm um, an ecologist. And so I'm always thinking about, you know, biodiversity in cities. Um, and I'm kind of curious because I thought I had seen something about corridors wrapped in with this project. So is there any sort of spatial um, prioritization where you're looking at accepting people based on the position of their parkway in sort of the larger scheme of relating to um, protected areas or any corridors like that? Or is that something you envision down the line? Um, and then, yeah, just if you can speak to any biodiversity things that anyone is, is thinking about measuring or just, yeah, anything like that? That's not really something that we considered. Um, I think right now we're open to accepting applicants all over the city. So, but um, promoting and focusing on specific neighborhoods is something that we might look into doing in the future. If we see like some areas might not have as many applicants, um, maybe we wanna outreach more to there just so we can have a nice spread of native plants all over the city. Great. Ron, oh, leave, get your hand up. Yeah, sorry, I, I had to step away a lot, so this might've been covered, but how, what is the funding does the water department get special grants or this city of Long Beach is helping to fund it or it's just part of your water conservation long range plan? Yeah, so the program is fully funded by our department. Um, it's a bit 
different from, for example, our lawn to garden program that is partially funded through the Metropolitan Water District um, turf rebate that they offer to a lot of agencies. But since the parkway has slightly different um, aspects to it, it doesn't really meet the design guidelines of that rebate. So this program is just fully funded by Long Beach Water. Anybody else have any other questions? Oh, Kathy, you'll be your hand up. Yep, I just, just got it there. Um, I, you talked about partnering with a couple of the nurseries um, and sometimes they didn't have availability. Did you run into any other problems with the nurseries? I mean, did they, do they, um, do you see them trying to expand both their inventory and also their capability as part of this? Yes, so um, initially when we reached out to different nurseries in the neighborhood, not all of them were willing to carry all the native plants that we offered through our program, which is why we only work with those two at the moment. But so far, um, they've been able to pretty readily provide the plants that we offer with a few exceptions. And um, I do think that there's a lot of opportunity to expand and maybe try and offer different types of California natives in the future. So that's something that we're in discussion with them at the moment. Just a slight follow on to that then. I, I, it To me, the palettes that you put together made it easier for people to, to envision um, some, yeah, having somewhat a restriction too might might have been a good thing. <laughs> Yes, exactly. So it, it makes it a lot easier for the nurseries as well to just kind of plan. If they know which plants we offer in our program, they know how much to stock up on and not have to spread themselves too thin. Yeah, I think keeping it simple is very, very important. And then people could always, you know, expand on their own and add to that. Oh, Carol has a question. Hi, uh, I know that the water district has a really wonderful um, plant selection. Are you featuring any of these designs over there so people can see what the plants look like? And are there any sort of specific recommendations you use for pavers? Are they um, slate or uh, water permeable? Anything special about them or specific? Thank you. Uh, for our pavers, we just offer one type. I don't, I wasn't involved in the process of choosing them, so I'm not too sure on how we decided on them, but they're like Arizona flagstone pavers. They kind of come in like irregular shapes to give a more natural look. Um, and then the first part of your question, I didn't quite catch. Do you mind repeating for me, please? Uh, certainly. At your facility, is that... I can't remember, it's not too over, on Wardlow, is it on Wardlow? Yes. Uh, there are all sorts of native plants and it's really beautiful. Uh, have you done any areas that kind of represent your different palettes? So people have an idea of seeing what these plants look like because they might be completely unfamiliar with them? Oh, yes, so our front gardens, yeah, um, we do have a lot of different types of plants there, but um, since it's not really like parkway shaped, I did incorporate some um, of our parkway plants in that front garden area, but we do have another like landscape area kind of on the other side of our facilities that we wanted to recreate the parkway program plants in, but we haven't gotten a chance to do that yet. So for the moment right now, we just have pictures of some of our completed projects on our website for customers to look at. Any other questions? Karen has her hand up. Oh, go ahead, Karen. Um, 
Yeah, so I live in Gardena, and, and I heard about this program a while back, and oh, wow, is there a way that non-residents could access the plants? Obviously, we'd have to buy the plants and stuff ourselves since we're not in Long Beach. Yeah, all of our plans are online on our program website, which is lbwater.org slash parkway. And we don't have to like register or anything. No, no, they're free to view. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're welcome. And our guidebook is um, uploaded onto that website as well. And those plants are available at Ricardo's Nursery and the other participating nurseries? Yes, Ricardo's Nursery and Garibaldo's Nursery will have those plants. That's great. Okay. Thanks, Karen. That's a great idea to um, take advantage of the, the idea. Um, all right, D has a question. You're on. Thank you. I was wondering, is the program available only to residential properties or is it also available for commercial properties? It is available to commercial properties. We just haven't had any um, apply yet, but I'm hoping if we do some more outreach to them this year, they might be interested in applying. Yeah, I just haven't seen any apply yet. Thank you. Okay, Rosalie, did you have another question? Yes, I just wanted to point out to Karen that um, if she can redo her parkway using one of the Long Beach plans, then it would be a great idea to try to work with some other people who are, you know, who've been involved with the Gardena Willows wetland to uh, try to work with the city of Gardena on a similar proposal. They, Golden State Water is their water company, but maybe something could be worked out that would be similar. Yeah, I don't know how that would work. It's, <laughs> it's uh, Cheryl's good at working with the city and it took her a long time to really get them involved even with the willows, so I don't know. Good, good thing to think about. Okay. Dee, did you have another question? No, I'm sorry, I forgot to lower my hand. I'm lowering it. That's all right. I just wanted to point out that Bloom California also has a couple of plant palettes that you can get design ideas for your parkway or your garden in general. I posted the link to the website in the chat. Okay. Any other questions, comments, ideas? All right. Well, thank you everybody for attending our meeting. Since it is relatively early, if anybody David, we have Milo next, right? Oh, Milo starts to give presentation, huh? Okay. Yeah, I can make it very quick for everybody though. No, 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 no. no. We we have lots of time still. No, oh, okay. don't don't shorten it. <laughs> Yeah, we have, we yeah. have, we have I, I didn't realize that he's about to go. I'm sorry. Oh, no problem at all. Uh, let me just screen or share my screen. Can you all see my presentation? Yes. yes. Uh oh, I think he froze. Yeah, we see your screen, but yeah, you seem to be frozen. Seems like the same thing happened to me earlier. Yeah. Hello? Hi, yeah, Milo. Are you? That's yeah. strange. <laughs> like, as soon as I shared my screen, it kicked me out. <laughs> Can you all see my screen now? Yes, we yeah. see your screen. Okay.
Okay. Well, um, I'll just start back from the top, uh, clarifying again that everyone can see me and see my presentation. Yeah, we can see you and we can hear you now. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, so good evening, everybody. My name is Milo Yukimoto from the Long Beach Water Department. Um, and today I'll be presenting on our Direct Install Gardens Pilot Program, or DIG for short. Quick program background. Um, so the DIG program is a front yard turf replacement for single family residences, um, where we are replacing existing turf um, to water wise or drought tolerant gardens. Um, this program is in partnership with the California State Coastal Conservancy, um, and it's been funded by a grant through them. Um, because of our partnership with the Coastal Conservancy, um, we did have to select a specific census track um, that was one low income and also located adjacent to the Los Angeles River watershed and project work began in May of 2020. Why we created the DIG pilot program was that um, based off of analytics um, from our lawn to garden program, we did see that we had low participation in our low income census tracks, um, as well as a lot of drop off of projects which started in those regions. Um, and it's primarily because landscape projects require a large upfront investment. Um, our lawn to garden program provides a rebate for when the project is completed. And so because of that, all of the work that's done, up, um, the resident has to pay for upfront until they receive the rebate at the end. And so this creates a, hard, a difficult barrier for a lot of individuals to participate, particularly in our low income communities. And so here's just some listed benefits of the program as a whole. Um, the partnership with the Coastal Conservancy, the main driver of it was for carbon sequestration um, as the grant had a requirement for garden installs as well as planting California native trees. And so with carbon sequestration in mind, we also wanna to provide to the urban cooling in dense urban areas, um, which generally do lack trees and have higher temperatures. And, and in addition to that, our gardens do have storm ret retention features to help prevent excessive runoff from these homes into the nearby canal, which feeds into the LA River. And so by increasing our urban watershed, um, we're also providing more of that water to the natural watershed underneath, um, which helps our plants and our urban, urban forests. And as I kind of mentioned, um, our our program or the DIG program specifically um, is not restricted to California natives. We do include California friendly plants. Um, similar to the native parkway program, we do have templates which participants can select from. Currently, um, we're only offering four at the moment. Um, it's the California native, a Mediterranean theme, a succulent theme, and then there's a mix, mixed theme Generally, we use that one for corner lots as it is a lot larger. And so um, our contracted landscape designer will kind of create a mix of the palettes together. And I, I apologize as I couldn't come up with any good puns for our palette names. <laughs> um, and lastly, but not least, um, we are in partnership with Conservation Corps of Long Beach, which is a local nonprofit. Um, they hire and provide job training and job education to at-risk youth from the community. And so not only are we providing these water-wise gardens and increasing the urban forestry in these neighborhoods, we're also providing jobs for the youth of the area and educating them on not California native plants, um, landscaping and um, providing good job, job experience for them. So how does this program all work? Um, it's fairly simple. Uh, step one is application. Uh, once you submit an application to us, it's then on us to verify that you are a resident in the specific census track. Uh, we do verify that you are a homeowner occupied home. Um, as since uh, we are installing a garden, if it is a renter home, uh, we need to verify that somebody is going to take care of this garden once the garden's been installed. And through that process, once you've been verified, um, our staff will conduct a pre-inspection of the home, just taking general measurements of the front yard area, uh, parkway, looking for water hookups and any uh, main indicators that we need to take note of. 
once that's completed, we send out all that information to our landscape designer, uh, which is Cal Eco Designs, uh, led by Kai Craig, if anybody knows Kai. Um, he's an amazing person and it's been really great to work with him. Uh, but adjacent on this screen here is one of his template designs, the California Native Design Plan, uh, which provides a basic layout plan as well as a plant list um, that he customizes per home um, as we get more applicants on board. And so once Kai's come up with these designs, uh, and we'll send them over to the applicant and make sure that they're okay with the general design. Um, from there, it's all of the laborious work. Um, step one would be turf removal, uh, which uh, Conservation Corps will conduct. Uh, once the turf has been removed, we generally let the uh, removed area rest for about like a week and a half, two weeks on average, um, sometimes a little bit longer, depending on how dense or um, deep the roots might get. Uh, but we do wanna help let the soil rest a little bit before we transition into the garden install. And so here's some quick before and during pictures of one of our participants. The left photo is before any work had begun. Um, and then the second photo showing the construction phase of the project. And so um, just a quick descriptor on the right. Um, generally, we have noticed that the overall soil quality um, in this census track is relatively low. So we have been needing to bring in some amended soil, which we've been mixing in um, just to help the plants establish early on. And they're setting up some some bender boards to create some walkways. Um, that way they can access the plants for pruning and upkeep. And here is a uh, before plant establishment and after. Uh, these pictures were only taken a few months apart. I, I wanna say roughly three months. And so the left one was immediately once the project was completed. And then the right one is three months after. And this design in particular was our Mediterranean theme. Um, and here's just one other uh, project that we worked on before and after. Um, this one is highlighting our California native design. And lastly, just two other projects. Uh, the left one as well as the California native, the right one is our succulent design. And so we had some great feedback from some of our participants. And so here I'll just quickly read um, from our participant, Irene. Um, our experience with the DIG program far exceeded our expectations as we watched the DIG team transform our patchy front lawn into an oasis. Since last fall, the new garden has added tremendous curb appeal to our home. The spring blossoms attracted hummingbirds and butterflies to the garden. And through the summer, the hardy trees and plants have continued to thrive. We feel very fortunate to have been able to take advantage of this wonderful program. Um, and here the resident submitted a photo of her and her partner um, with their beautiful garden. And then here's just one more quick testimonial. Um, Miss Jacqueline, she said she was very pleased with the entire experience. The process from the application to completion of the project was so smooth and I'm proud of my new drought tolerant garden and love to see people stop and admire it. Uh, yeah, and overall, it's been really great to get this feedback from participants because um, some of them didn't really know exactly what they're getting themselves into. But once they see the final product, they, um, yeah, some of them were very ecstatic to see the, the results. Um, yeah, similar to what Tina had mentioned, um, some of our participants have varying knowledge of garden upkeep or plant knowledge. And so um, we created these quick guidebooks. Um, Shout out to our colleague, Danny, and our graphic designer, Jesse. Um, they help make these in-house. Um, they have very just general information about um, watering during the various seasons, um, how to prune trees, and depending on which template they pick, uh, we did include a quick background on some of the plants um, that may be included in their design. Um, and yeah. Um, really appreciative of Danny who put in a lot of the background research to get this information and put this all together. And so at the moment, uh, we've completed 10 gardens um, to replace a, 
close to 11,000, but 10,708 square feet. Um, we're, we're aiming for 25 gardens, so we're a little less than halfway there. Um, but most of our new participants actually are all selecting the California native plant template, um, which is really exciting. Um, I think a lot more people are getting on board with uh, planting California natives at their homes and residences. And as I had mentioned, um, one of our agreements with Coastal Conservancy was planting more trees in the neighborhood. And so we did partner with the Parks Department um, to plant some additional trees as well. Um, so not only were we planting trees at residences, but we also planted more trees at the park. Um, Jackson Park, it is the sole park in the census tract. And to date, we've currently planted 56 trees. And these are just some quick estimated savings. Um, emission savings, um, we, we are able to so sequester 42,000 kilograms of CO2, uh, which is equivalent to almost 5,000 gallons of gasoline consumed or 107,000 miles driven. Um, and in addition to that, we have estimated 183 gallons, uh, 183,000 gallons saved per year. And more than not, these figures will increase as time goes on, especially as these trees mature and they're able to sequester more uh, carbon. Um, but right now, most of the trees are pretty young and adolescent, so it'll take some time for them to really establish. And that concludes my presentation. And I'll open the floor for any questions. Looks like Tina got all the questions. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we go, Carol. <laughs> Hi, what areas of Long Beach um, is this uh, uh, program being uh, developed and it's great to see Surfrider involved in it too. Yeah, uh, so the census tract that we're currently working in is in the North Long Beach area. It's roughly between Cherry and Orange Avenue um, as the east and west boundaries. And then it's north of 52nd Street um, and then south of uh, it actually goes one block north of South Street. I believe it's 58th or 59th, but that general area. Chris. Yes, Chris. Yeah, and looking at the, the map, that's a pretty tight area. Is that is that strategic to like carbon sequestration um, to stay in that tight block? Yeah, so um, when the census track was selected, it was actually selected um, before I had come on board at Long Beach, but uh, working with Coastal Conservancy, um, they utilized uh, the Cal EPA. They have this Cal Enviro screen, which uh, gives a scoring rate to all of the census tracks based on pollution rates and um, temperature. There's a lot of different uh, factors that they put into consideration, but all of that and, and also... Um, including the fact that it is adjacent to a canal that feeds into the LA River and the LA River watershed. Um, ultimately that census track was selected. Thanks. Hey, I just had a quick question. I was wondering mm -hmm. what kind of work you all are able to do or maybe could use more support on in terms of translating your materials or your outreach information. My experience trying to go through the the normal program, the non-dig mm -hmm. um, program, is like everything was in English, and I was just thinking it'd be a pretty big challenge for monolingual Spanish or Khmer speakers to even understand the steps in the process. So, just wondering if you guys have interpreters or translators on your team, and if there's any support that might be used to help make the language, you know, the programs more accessible. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, the city as a whole, we do have a translation department, but availability of staff yep. who speak each respective language um, can vary. Um, we did do our best in terms of translating application materials um, and most all of our flyers to Khmer, Spanish, and Tagalog. Um, but the hardest part of the language barrier is getting them on board and working with them moving forward from there um, because 
just having day-to-day conversations, we have, we have to call our translation department and um, find an available staff member who speaks the respective language and then kind of do a three-party communication. Um, so it does get a little tricky. And I think because of that, um, some of the participants who might not be native English speakers um, are much more hesitant to participate, unfortunately. Hey, Carol, do you have another question? No, Julie. Hi, um, I was wondering on the trees you're planting, are you trying to plant any native oak trees? Yes, um, so we actually did plant um, four coast live oaks in the region, as well as Catalina cherries. We did hope to plant more coast live, live oaks in the neighborhood, however, um, because the, the census tract that we're working in specifically is very dense um, and the parkways are relatively small or the lot sizes are small, um, it was kind of tricky for us to get approval to plant such large trees or um, coast live oaks specifically. Um, and so we were able to kind of come to a middle ground where um, F space is available, we would, but uh, more than not, we've been promoting more California ash trees and then the Catalina cherries. Okay, thank you. Karen. Actually, yes. I was also wondering what California native trees, what about shrub, native shrubs like lemonade berry or twilight, yeah. such? Um, all, included in the California native template are some shrubs. Um, yeah, I... I apologize, I'm not a plant specialist, uh, but yeah, there are native shrubs included in our designs um, that we do install as well. Rosalie. I just wanna point out that mule fat can be a great, uh, turn into a small tree if it's pruned right and mm -hmm. I have one in my backyard that's probably eight to 10 feet tall and provides a lot of shade and a great place for birds to hang out. Okay, thank you. Now with pruning, you can do a lot. Um, lemonade berry um, can be pruned into a hedge, could be pruned into whatever shape you want it to be pruned into. And then if you take native plants and you prune them, then uh, you, know, you, can have, you get habitat from your ornamental plants as well. So that's kind of a nice uh, side benefit. Okay. Yeah, um, because of the very knowledge of like pruning and overall garden maintenance, um, our colleague, Danny, she's actually been um, taking the lead on one, once gardens are completed, um, she sets up a general meeting with them to kind of walk over some basic pruning and maintenance information, um, as well as um, on the beginning end of the project, uh, when they do apply, she'll kind of ask them um, if they do have a strategy or idea um, on how they're going to upkeep the garden. Um, because we, yeah, ideally, we don't want to go through this whole effort of providing a garden to somebody if they have no intentions of upkeeping it. And so, um, yeah, we're trying to do our best and do our due diligence to make sure that um, the new applicants are aware of what it really takes to have this garden. Yeah, I think uh, garden maintenance in our uh, Ponzi grant program, garden maintenance is always an important part of it. Um, a lot of people think that just because they're native plants, they don't need any uh, care, that you just put them in and, and it'll take care of themselves. But um, you know, gardens need maintenance and weeding and pruning and you know, appropriate watering, not too much, not too little. Yeah, um, yeah, gardens are living artwork and they take a lot of TLC. <laughs> Correct. And actually living artwork is a great term and it's important to remember um, many people want it to look, uh, you know, mature on, on the first day, but if you look at any plant or animal uh, in this world, uh, they don't look mature on the first day. They, they 
you know, they have to grow and develop in the same way the garden. Yeah. Yeah. Some uh, one particular participant, when we finished, um, she had called me and she was like, oh, are these all the plants that are going in? Um, just because she thought it looked very sparse. But um, of course, like just in like a month or two, like the plants started taking up a lot more space and she started seeing the garden filling out. Yeah, I think that's a huge mistake that, uh, especially in, in, in big projects, um, you know, city projects, uh, commercial projects, uh, you know, people want it to look finished on day one and then there's no room for things to grow in. So actually, um, it, it actually is a negative that mm -hmm. too many plants. Yeah, I think it's fabulous what you guys have done uh, in terms of you know, keeping it really simple for people, um, you know, as simple as possible. Um, I think that's, you know, that's the key. And, and uh, you know, if you look at, if you look at, say, like suburban tract houses and stuff, um, in the beginning, all the houses look alike, but eventually people you know, customize them, the landscape, they do their landscaping differently. Uh, they paint their house a different color, you know, something they, they, they add on an addition. And so after a while, it, it actually develops some character. And I think it's the same thing with the gardens, you know, of course, as you said, it's living artwork. So even if everybody plants, you know, three California fuchsias and two Cianothus uh, and, and one, um, you know, Artemisia, whatever it might be, and gets the same rocks. Everybody's garden's going to look different depending on the microclimate and just how the plants grow. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm, I think now we are coming to the end. <laughs> Another speaker hiding in the, in the bushes somewhere. <laughs> I apologize, Milo. It was a, a very interesting presentation, a great program, and I love the name. And maybe I should say I dig the name. I was, <laughs> I was live in the 50s. We used to say I dig that, man. So uh, anyhow, um, all right. Uh, I do want to remind everybody uh, that uh, the Land Conservancy uh, Nature Walk will be this Saturday at uh, 1 p.m., starting from Abalone Cove uh, parking lot. Many of you lucky enough to be 62 or over, the parking is free. Walk itself is free for everybody. Um, and um, in the chat, there is the number to call for Governor Newsom uh, to uh, um, ask for action on the uh, changes in the rooftop solar policy. Um, so, and if anybody has any questions about that, they're welcome to contact me. So thank you, everybody, and uh, we'll see you all next month, um, March 7th. Um, uh, we're going to have a talk about Seed LA, so getting back to the LA River. Um, uh, Seed LA is going to talk about what they're doing. Uh, should be a very interesting program. And don't forget, um, tonight we started for the first time our little uh, garden talk at the beginning of the program. So uh, for people who sign on early, um, you'll hopefully be spared my jokes and, and you get to bring your garden questions and uh, share that with the audience. Our goal was to try to make it more like our uh, actual in-person meetings where you know, we have some dialogue and, and, and the like. Oh, thank you, Dee. Well, maybe we could do both. I'll, I'll try to have a joke next week. Are we still recording? We are still recording, and actually, I wanted to ask Tina and Milo if that was um, okay with them. I forgot to um, run the, run ahead of the meeting and ask them for advance permission. So, if it's if it's not okay with either one of you, or if there's some policy that your employer has against it, then of course I'll just delete the recording. Um, I don't know of any uh, policies that would prevent this meeting from being recorded, um, but. We can double check for you. I, I'm pretty sure it should be fine, though. Tina, any personal reservations? <laughs> it's all good for me, yeah. <laughs>
All right, you know, our, our daily viewership tends to run in, in the in the ones and twos of people. So all right, well, thank you very much. If something changes about that, please contact me uh, or um, anyone in the chapter and they can direct the your uh, your additional response to me. So thank you for coming tonight. And uh, I'm gonna end the recording now. Uh, 